Hi, and thank you for joining me for the last of a series of videos related to financial statements. In this video, we're going to discuss the statement of cash flows. Now, the statement of cash flows is a type of financial statement that is used to determine or at least show investors how companies both spend as well as receive the cash that they have. Uh, cash is, of course, the lifeblood of any organization and is by and large one of the most important things that organizations can generate because it can be spent on a variety of different things. And, and as a result of that, we attempt to track both the inflows and the outflows of cash. Uh, we want to know um, if it's being spent, where is it going? And if it's being received, where is it coming from? Now, a negative cash flow, meaning a cash outflow, more money or more cash specifically is going out of the organization that is coming in, is not necessarily a bad thing. We just need to determine really what is the cause of it. Is a significant capital expenditure where we're expanding and purchasing large amounts of, of uh, property or equipment and it's going to pay dividends later on? Uh, or are we maybe paying cash into things that aren't necessarily going to provide a return? So the why is what the statement of cash flows really attempts to determine is, you know, why are we losing cash or why are we receiving it? Where is it coming from? It attempts to pinpoint the source. So from an investor perspective, the statement of cash flows is very, very valuable because it allows you to determine both how a company spends its cash and also how it receives it and from what sources. So we're going to go through this uh, example of a statement of cash flows that I created here line by line uh, just so we can explain some of the more common entries. Uh, as you've noticed, there's kind of a theme that this isn't necessarily all of the entries that you will encompass. Uh, you'll look at statement of cash flows from a variety of different companies and each is kind of tailored to the information that they're presenting, but they generally include some common things, although the names may be uh, portrayed a little differently. They may use different different names for some of the entries here. So let's go through the statement of cash flows. Uh, first off, just like the income statement, the statement of cash flows is looking at performance over a specific period of time. And so we're typically looking at a quarterly basis or on an annual basis. Contrary to the balance sheet, which is taking a look at a financial position at a specific point in time, we're looking at, with the statement of cash flows, performance over a period of time. Now, the statement of cash flows breaks things up into three specific areas, uh, three areas where cash can essentially be received from or spent. And we look at those as both operating cash flow, also investing cash flow, and financing cash flow. And those are the three sources, three possible areas for a company to either spend or receive cash. So under operating cash flow, where we're sp specifically looking at cash flow that is either received or spent from the typically sale of goods and services. So for starters, you can see here that we have a cash payment from customers. And so this is cash that we've received from customers that have paid us for obviously purchasing our particular goods or services. And we have approximately $568,000 generated from cash from customers and so from selling goods and services here. And so that reflects obviously positive. That is cash that is flowing into the organization. Uh, it's either payment for goods or services or uh, payment that was once originally accounts receivable uh, converted to cash after the customer essentially paid that particular debt or that line of credit, so to speak. Now the next thing here is we have inventory. Now inventory is what we have to acquire to sell to the customer so we can in turn generate revenue. And so by purchasing inventory, that is a cash outflow because it is money that we were paying to obtain product to later sell. And so we have $175,000 being spent to acquire inventory. Now anything in parentheses you'll notice here is a negative number. And so that would reflect an outflow. If it is not included in parentheses, then it is a inflow, meaning money that is being put into the organization or cash more specifically. The next thing we have here are cash operating expenses. And cash operating expenses can include a variety of things. Uh, most commonly though, is it includes 
uh, expenditures for purchasing securities in other companies. And so companies can purchase the stocks and different securities of other publicly traded companies, uh, just like consumers can or regular investors. Now, uh, the difference here and why is it, it isn't reported in another area is because these are typically short term meaning that the organization does not have any intent to hold on to these securities for a long period of time, uh, typically very, very short term. And so we have $123,000 going to purchase, arguably, short-term financial securities from other companies. It could include a number of different things, but that's probably one of the more common entries that you'll see. And so what we have to do is all of these different journal entries, we have to then tally or total together. And so we take our $568,000 and then of course factor out both expenses for inventory as well as cash spent for operating expenses and we're left with $270,000. Now that is a positive, so that is cash that we've generated specifically from operating activities. Now the next section is investing cash flow. And investing cash flow is cash flow that's received from the sale or purchase of what we call fixed assets. Uh, assets obviously being things that have value, some type of value. Uh, fixed meaning that they do not move. And so this can include land, can include property, can include equipment, different facilities, right? So these are typically uh, long-term expenses, uh, typically uh, much higher in value, of course. In addition to fixed assets, or at least the purchase and the sale of fixed assets, we're also looking at the purchase and sale of what we call long-term securities. And so remember, when we got to the operating cash flow, the cash operating expenses, what's typically looking at purchasing or selling securities, but in the short term, uh, with investing cash flow here, we are referring to long-term securities, meaning that the company intends to hold on to these for a longer period of time. It could include uh, bonds, possibly. Uh, it can also include regular securities that we simply just want to hold on to. And so looking at these entries here, you can see that the first one is that we've sold some land or the company in this example sold some type of land and they generated $100,000 in cash from the sale of that land. But we do have some expenditures here notated in these parentheses. The first of which is we spent $15,000 purchasing equipment. And it looks like we also spent $33,000 on investments, which are commonly going to be long-term securities, bonds, stocks, those types of securities. Now, similar to the previous section, we're going to add all of these total. So we're going to take that 30, 15000 and 33000 remove that from our $100,000 cash inflow, and we're left with $52,000 in cash specifically from investing activities. Now the last section is what we call financing cash flow. And financing cash flow shows how the company generates cash specifically from either issuing additional shares or purchasing their shares from the, from the market or taking long-term loans. And so we'll put stock and loans. And so the first entry is that we actually increased our bank loans. And so this is a long-term bank loan. And so we incurred some type of debt, uh, $45,000. And so we obviously are on the hook for the debt. We owe it. But in the interim, we generate $45,000. That is a cash infusion, which we can use. Uh, maybe it's to purchase inventory. Maybe it's to purchase equipment. It could be for a variety of different things. But it still is money that is coming into the organization. It has to be paid back at some point, but at least not right now. Uh, the next thing that we look at here is that we had to pay a dividend or we chose to pay a dividend. And if you remember from last time, a dividend is a, a quarterly payment paid to investors, typically on a per share basis, as a way of just rewarding them for the investment and providing them with some type of somewhat guaranteed return. Dividends aren't guaranteed, but typically once a company begins to pay them, they're very reluctant to stop because the market does not look at that very favorably. We tend to think that the company is in a difficult financial position and then the stock value will, will adjust accordingly. And so we've paid $85,000 here 
out towards dividends. So this is going to investors. This is cash that is leaving the organization is thus an outflow and is thus reflected in parentheses. And the last thing is we actually uh, sold stock or purchased stock. And so if this area, the reason it's different from operating activities, which is up here, is in investing activities, this is, or I'm sorry, in financing uh, activities, this is specifically money that we purchase from our own shares. And so we have a certain number of shares outstanding. And what we decide to do is maybe the value of the stock is, is somewhat low. And so we say, you know what, it's a really good deal right now. We decide that we're gonna purchase our, our shares that are out in the open market, and then we're going to essentially reduce the number of shares outstanding. And so companies can buy back their own shares. And so in this case, we decided to spend $100,000 purchasing our own shares that were out there in the market. Uh, and so that obviously is a cash outflow and has to be accounted for appropriately. And so if you take our $45,000 cash inflow and factor out the $85,000 for dividends and also factor out the $100,000 to purchase our own shares back, uh, we have a cash outflow of $140,000. So $140,000 in cash specifically left our organization related to financing activities. Now that negative may not be a bad thing and because if you look at it, we're paying a dividend, which those are generally good as long as you have the means to which to, to pay them and to consistently pay them. Uh, and then the purchase of stock, that may be a positive thing, especially if we bought it when it was at a very, very low level, we could save ourselves a little bit of money there. So you need to look a little further deeper into simply just, well, it's positive or negative. Positive, of course, is generally you know, the best thing, but simply because cash flow is negative doesn't mean that we might benefit from it in the long term and not simply just in the interim. Now, if we take the total amounts or values in each of these three areas and cumulatively add them together, now what we get is our total cash flow. And so total cash flow here is $182,000. And so we generated $182,000 the last uh, fiscal year from operating activities, investing, and financing activities. So all of our activities together generated us with that type of money. Now, typically what's also reflected here is there's a couple of other items. Uh, the first one is you're usually gonna see uh, what's called cash at the beginning of the period. And this is at the beginning of the period, which due to the date being December 31st of 2012, in this particular example, the beginning of the period was January 1st of 2012. So that's the entire fiscal year, of course, for this company. Uh, and so however much we started with in cash at the very, very beginning of the year will be this next light item. So it will typically go right around here, just below total cash flow. And then right below that will be cash at the end of the year. Could also be referred to as ending cash balance. It's similar to that. It's just how much cash do we have at the very, very end, meaning December 31st of 2012. And so simply what we do is we take our $182,000 here, and then we add that to the cash that we started with at the beginning of the period. And then that gets us the cash at the end of the period. And then if you were to look at the statement of cash flows a year later, right, on that particular statement, where it says cash at the beginning of the period, that will actually be this figure here. Because what we end with one year is the beginning cash at the following year. And so that just gets you an idea for how they kind of are streamlined together and they do reflect similar pieces of information and usually build upon one another. But those are the three sections of the statement of cash flows. So hopefully that clarifies a couple things and gives you an idea of what type of information is included in each section.